Hello everyone, this is Rick Grantham of rickgrantham.com. This is part of an ongoing series where we're bringing you the Excel experts out there in the community. So far we've talked with trainers, we've talked with game developers, we've talked with Excel MVPs, and this time is no different. We're bringing you an Excel MVP right here from the United States from up there in Ohio, Jordan Goldmeyer. Jordan Goldmeyer uh, runs optionexplicitvba.com along with Goldmeyer Consulting, where he does Excel consulting as well. So in this interview, he talks about his book that's coming out around dashboards and Excel. So he's gonna talk about that, talk about what his favorite book is and what he finds compelling in a book, what's really great about his favorite book. And he walks you a lot through dashboards and decision support and how that all comes into play in his book. So all of that is coming up next. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Rick Grantham of rickgrantham.com. Uh, today's an exciting day. Today I have Jordan Goldmeyer, um, author, blogger, well, soon to be author, um, barbecue extraordinaire. You'll, you'll notice his, his clothes are a little bit different. He's got the unkempt beard now, which is a little bit different from the promo videos we did because I completely hosed the audio the first time we did this. It was a brilliant two-hour interview. Um, I, I laughed, I cried, it, it was it was perfect, and then you, afterwards you find out you completely host the audio. So first off, Jordan, welcome again. Thank you for being patient. I appreciate it. Would you mind telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, thanks for having me, Rick. Um, so as Rick said, I'm Jordan Goldmeyer. I write for the blog optionexplicitvba.com. I'm also writing a book that's due out in February. Hopefully we're going to hit that deadline. I'm not so sure. The book is called Dashboards. Uh, for Excel, and we may end up changing the name uh, to capture sort of the decision support system data visualization stuff um, that we're doing in it. So maybe dashboards and data visualization or dashboards and decision support systems. Not that that really matters, but I want to bring that up because it's sort of what I do, and what I do is more than just Excel dashboards. So uh, what the blog is about, what the book is about, is um, really doing Excel applications, or I should say Windows-style applications with Excel. And what the book will argue is that you can do them much more cheaply, you can do them uh, much more quickly than sort of the big vendor products that are being sold right now. Not that the big big vendor products don't have their time in place, but Excel really uh, provides a uh, quick and easy and inexpensive solution for people who want to replicate what's already out there. So the book is more than just a uh, guide on dashboards. It's more, more than just, um, say, like Michael Alexander's book, uh, dashboards for dummies, um, or I should say Excel dashboards and reports for dummies. I think that's what it's called. And that's really just kind of like a, um, a quick guide. Here's how to do this. My book has a lot more discussion, a lot more theory, a lot more here's what I've done before, here's why I think you should do it, even if you don't agree. At least you know why um, I and other uh, Excel MVPs choose to do it this way, and also where I kind of differ with them, and I do end up differing with them quite a bit. So um, it really is a book in the vein of my favorite book, Professional Excel Development, Do you have it? which I actually have yeah. right here. I don't know. I guess it's... <laughs> That's perfect. So wh which version is that? 2007? 2000... No, this is, the, this is the 2003 version. Okay. This is, the, this is the original. I don't know if this is the original. This is my original. I haven't actually read the 2007 version, but I love this book. Um, really, my book was... I guess what motivated me to write it was that there's a lot of great blogs out there. Um, there's a dearth of written material on Excel development. So a lot of great um, books that are purely Excel, purely VBA, um, very few that are sort of advanced. Uh, and really, I would say haven't, since this book came out, there really hasn't been a good book to update or replace it. And I don't think, I don't know that my book's going to be able to do that, but I'd like to sort of contribute to what is a dearth of material. So, you know, speaking about your book, you, know, you mentioned it's not only uh, Dashboards for Excel, uh, but you're considering changing the title to Dashboards for Excel plus Decision Support plus, you know, a, a, a huge, huge title right now. Uh, it rolls off the tongue, by the way. It's just uh, it flows, and I appreciate that. I'm sure your, sure your readers will appreciate that, too. Could, could, you, could you explain how you break out the difference between Dashboards and Decision Support and, and kind of your theory and your thinking around that and how that flows into the book? So uh, this is a really good question. So when you look at um, Excel products that they have online, you see that there's a lot of um, 
there's a lot of confusion over what is actually dashed for. In fact, many times I see anytime someone makes something in, uh, interactive in Excel, they call it a dashboard. And um, I get what they mean, but it may not actually be a dashboard. And I am trying to write a book that someone like Stephen Few, the dashboard guru, right. um, Mr. would actually look at the book and say, Mr. Perceptual this, Edge. this is right. I mean, even if I don't get it fully right, um, you know, he would say this is a step in the right direction. So a dashboard, to be specific, is a... Um, is a, a means to provide all the information necessary to, to make a decision on one screen. So I probably botched the actual Stephen Few working definition there, but really it, it's a set, you, you have one screen and you have a set of metrics and they answer a question or they help create a, um, they help you take an action, but I should say the, their main purpose is to monitor. So you are monitoring a process, you're monitoring um, a decision, uh, you're monitoring your company's profits. I mean, you know, you could really monitor e everything. You, you could really go into the nitty-gritty of what's the difference between this dashboard or the other one. I mean, the fact is that so long as you can have metrics, um, you can monitor it. So the point of a dashboard is to look very quickly and understand what's going on. This actually is different than decision support system. So a decision support system um, usually has a set of questions, um, some type of questionnaire inputs, it has a model that does something, and it has an output, and that output um, exists to help you uh, make a decision. So um, they're actually not the same thing. So people will say, I have a model, and it's a dashboard. But you could have a dashboard that is monitoring the model, but they're not the same thing. And in fact, interactivity to a dashboard should only exist to the point that it furthers the monitoring and furthers the investigation. So um, on the other hand, decision support systems help you make a decision. I know that sounds like I'm repeating the title in it, but they're decision support. So therefore management um, to make a decision on. So <laughs> that answers your question. Yeah, what, what, I, what I think I hear you Go saying is, is, is really as you start getting into kind of uh, operations management, as you start getting into um, what if analysis, as you start getting right. into particularly regression where you may have a series of inputs that uh, moving of those inputs then impacts your output, the ability to play with that and have different decisions, um, that ends up being a little bit different from a dashboard just from a, just from a definition right. perspective. And, and your book covers how to do that in Excel, not only the dashboard piece, but also the decision support piece. That's right. So what what's actually um, works out um, to our advantage here is that uh, the ways to create the dashboard components and the ways to create um, – the uh, decision support system components, they're, they're the same components. So really knowing what to do, uh, knowing how to, like the difference between both is important. But as far as from a developmental perspective, you're building the same thing. They're the same components. So what I argue is that you should learn how to make both components so you know how to make one for the other. Um, and I talk about this in the book, what I call reusable components, because you can actually um, take charts and graphs that you really like and you can sort of... Um, pre-build them or you can make them in such a way as that you can drag them and drop them um, between uh, sheets or uh, within your code. So this actually um, is not object-oriented programming as is somewhat possible in Visual Basic for applications. So I don't want people to think that I'm talking about classes and objects. This is really a development style um, that I've, I don't want to say I came up with it. It's one I've been using right. um, having to do with how you name variables moving away from Hungarian notation, moving to a certain workbook structure, and it makes it conducive to building these things quickly and changing them because the other thing that you'll notice if you build a lot of these is that a lot of them are all the same problem. I mean, there's maybe five to six real prime um, analog problems, and then from there a lot of sub-problems descend. So uh, and I'm sure that you can actually attest to that, you know, building a dashboard, so your HR dashboards that I know right. you uh, we're talking about. So, you know, how many how many different HR dashboards are there? Well, when you get down to the nitty gritty, maybe there are really different ones. But as you kind of go up to the top to the general aspects, there probably aren't a whole lot. You know, right. someone asks you to consult, and you have maybe three or four that you can pull from your head. Maybe you have another one that you make up and you reuse it later. So, right. So, so if somebody picks up your book. Um, uh, do what, what sort of uh, what sort of knowledge should they already have going into that? Should they already have a working knowledge of VBA, or, or where, where does this start off? Uh, for them? Well, it, it's not a beginner book. 
because, um, and I feel bad for that because people will say, oh, I really want to learn Excel. I'm going to get your book. And I say, well, too bad. Uh, and they also say, go to your blog. And I say, no, go to Chandu. Don't go to my blog. It's, uh, it's yeah. a little bit more advanced to apply. You're the only um, person that says, don't go to my blog. <laughs> I know, I know. Next no, time I say, don't, don't go to my blog, go visit Rick. Rick's cool. We like well, him. <laughs> yeah, go to Excel for small business. You got it. Uh, RickFrance.com. <laughs> Um, yeah, it really, it, it comes down to, uh, you need to have a working knowledge of VBA. Uh, mm -hmm. you need to have a working knowledge of Excel. So I know we talked about this in our first, um, I'm going to try to move my head. I see there's like sure. a glare on my glasses a little bit. So, uh, I know we talked about this in our first, um, recording, which is that people have a view of Excel that here's kind of, um, the top. So I know pivot tables, I know VLOOKUP, and then there's someone else in their company, maybe a group of people. They'll call them, like, Excel wizards or something like that. Right. So there's always this kind of, like, um, there are always these kind of people who know more, and I can never learn as much as they can. And I know people don't believe me when I tell them this, but you can learn as much as they can. Um, you can't. You are smart enough. Uh, you can do it only if you want. So what the book requires is working knowledge of Excel and working knowledge of VBA, meaning, like, syntax knowledge. You don't need to know Windows APIs. You don't need to know it through and through. Um, but if you have a willingness to learn and you find that you like coding at least a little bit, you don't have to love it. You know, some people right. hate it. But um, it, it, you have the skills to learn it. But it's definitely not a beginning level book. So, so question for you then. Um, and, and this is um, some of the people who might be listening to this or watching this uh, might be blog owners or writers or, or things of that nature who, who haven't written a book yet. And they might be intrigued that your this is your first book, correct? What, what was that is, that's right. What was the the process of, of how you of how you got a publisher, or, or you, how, how did that even look for you? How, how did that work? Um. Well, I kind of came in knowing absolutely nothing. So what I did is I searched <laughs> how do I write a tech book? How do uh, I do this? So I searched and I found um, that the big publishers, so O'Reilly, um, A Press, uh, Wiley, there's actually only. Truth is, even though there's some smaller seeming publishers, like you know, there's these names, there's really only two or three big ones that they all fall under that brand. And I think Wiley is one of them, Thomson Reuters. I mean, so the point is, just what I would do is go to the bookshelf in your house if you own some of these books, or go to a library, go to Barnes and Noble, go and look for you know the different um, right. publishing uh, logos and pick ones whose books you really like. So the first company I pitched to was actually O'Reilly. Um, and at that point, the book really was not, the idea was not very well formed. So I sent it to them. Um, you just send them an email. They actually have an email line. Really? Uh, they say they'll come back in two weeks. Yeah. Three months went by. They'll call us. We'll call you. Email. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so I sent them an email. I don't know it was three months. It was a while because I was, no. like, really waiting for it. Yeah. Um, but they said that they'll return. So I sent them an email, and they said, oh, this must have fallen through the cracks. Sorry, we're not interested. So then another year went by, um, and I really kind of took some of the stuff they said, you know, this really doesn't fit our market. And I thought, well, I need to take this, and I need to redo it to make it um, more instructional. So the original book was kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It would be like if someone took my blog and they dumped it into a book. So it wasn't really well organized. It was just like, here's some things I've written, you know, an anthology of Done. my thoughts. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um so I actually redid it. I came up with an outline. I pitched it to them. They came back with comments, and they said, well, try this, try that, try that. And really it went to about two or three different um, iterations, and then they say, well, we want a full proposal, and then you go through and you map out every chapter, which you think is it will help you, but it won't. Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they change so much. You find that, like, you write about stuff ten chapters ahead of time, so at first, I was, had this huge book, and now I'm condensing it, which I think is a good thing, but at first, but I didn't want it to be a good thing. I wanted a huge book, but now... You wanted I'm that like, book like... like you wanted yeah, that. <laughs> I wanted it to be like this. I wanted it to be like someone would look at that and say, that's a great, you know, paperweight, too. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted someone to be like, I shouldn't say that about my book. I, I don't know. I was thinking like this Atlas Shrugged style volume. Right. <laughs> that. Nice. But... Uh, I, I wanted, I really did not like the fact that I was condensing because I was like, well, you're going to pay this much money for this book. I should give you content. But I talked to my publisher. They're like, no, that's better. It's better to say more with fewer words. And in fact, that advice, saying more with fewer words, is a good dashboard advice. You should 
try to have metrics that tell more um, by taking up less space and by being less flashy. So if you can communicate more with less, um, that's a good thing. It, it all comes back to dashboards. It's all circular. Well, you know, it does. <laughs> well, really, in a certain sense, it comes back to English. So, like, Strunk and White in uh, the Elements of Style say, I think it's like, what, Rule 14, omit needless words. Um, you know, we try to omit needless things in general. I mean, I don't know about in life, but in terms of communication items such as a dashboard, uh, data visualization, you really want to uh, say more with less. You know, I mean, just think about it as, as money, as currency. <laughs> right. Get more value, value for your units. So, uh, yeah. So, so in addition to the book that you have coming out, which I am guessing is going to be one of your favorites. <laughs> I wouldn't read it. <laughs> and, and, and you mentioned the <laughs> – so I'm going to have a big thing over here that says, just, I wouldn't read it right over your, right over your no. head. It's going to be uh, – so it's going to be fun. I can't wait, to, can't wait to put this into editing. Uh, so, so in addition to your book and, and, um, and the professional development book that you showed there as well, you mentioned the elements of style. Do, do you have any other favorite books that you would – that you'd recommend for uh, you know for people who might be watching us. Um, so favorite books as far as uh, Excel goes. So yeah. I could get some people will disagree with this, but um, I think it was Dijkstra, the computer science um, uh, professor who did a lot for computer science, may have been the father of computer science. Hopefully, I'm attributing that correctly. Right. Uh, he said, if you want to learn how to uh, code master language. So actually, I do believe that these books on English um, help people uh, sort of think about these problems. But that maybe that's just me. So I've always kind of liked writing. Um, so that's kind of like uh, a book that's outside of, you know, the Excel um, space. But as far as um, other books go within dashboards, um, information, uh, dashboard design, by Stephen Few. I think that's what it's called. He also has another book, Show Me the Numbers, great book. If you are interested in very technical stuff, uh, the book by Colin Ware, uh, for sexual design, I can't quite remember it. Uh, but he has, a, he has a chapter in there that's actually sort of the basis for uh, uh, the pretentive attributes found in Stephen Few's books um, and several others. The books I would stay away from, actually... You may want to put this out. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> no, no. Actually, no, I will say this because yeah. I know a lot of people like uh, Nathan Yao's stuff from Flowing Data. I have his book. I like his book. I don't think the stuff in there is good for dashboards. I mean, I'll, that's yeah. just uh, how I feel on that. Um, I sort of differ with some of the work that's on there. Another book uh, that's a really good introduction to data visualization, but it's probably more in the Nathan Yao category, but I think has a lot of good information about um, thinking about data visualization as a Alberto uh, Cairo's book, um, The Functional Art, I think it's called. So uh, that's a really good book. And, oh, yeah, Edward Tuff's books, um, right. Visual Visual Perception of Quantitative Information. I think that's right. That blows we'll off the out. tongue, too. You'll, that's you'll great. You'll flash behind, <laughs> and then we can have, like, a thumbs up or a thumbs down if I got it right or wrong. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so did you like this? Do you want to see more of these? Do you want to leave some feedback from Jordan? For Jordan, I know he'd love to hear. And if so, feel free to leave some comments down below. You should also see a subscribe button. You know, we're putting these out on a regular basis, so feel free to like this or delete directly to this as a hot link if you need to for one of your stories. You'll also see some links over here on the right-hand side. Uh, some of the other videos we've done, some of the other interviews we've done, feel free to click on those as well. Until next time, this is Rick Grantham reminding you to be a champion.